It's been a while since I bought this hunter coat pattern from Fiber Mood, but I didn't have the chance to sew it until now. I was waiting to be more comfortable with my sewing level, as this sewing project is not that easy. I've shortened the pattern length by 25 centimeters as I'm petite, and I'll do the extra small size to give you an idea, but the small size would have fit me perfectly as well. I won't use shoulder pads as is mentioned in the supplies list. The pattern and fabric pieces prep is quite long, so let's jump into it. First, I place and pin the pattern pieces on the main fabric. The pieces 2, 5 and 8 should be placed on the fold. Be careful of the pattern pieces 6, 13 and 14, you only need them once. Then I cut the pieces. I repeat the process for the lining pieces. Only the number 10 should be placed on the fabric fold and you only need pattern piece 15 once. For the interfacing, I prepare only the pieces 5, 6, 8, 13, 16 and 18. Once that's done, I press the interfacing pieces to the matching fabric pieces. Next, I overlock around the pieces except the curved edges and the interfaced pieces. You can skip that part if you don't have a serger or if you prefer not to overlock the edges. My fabric unravels easily so I prefer to secure the edges. After, I clip the notches and do a basting stitch as mentioned on the pattern pieces. Now that everything is ready, we can start. I fold the chest pocket weld, piece 13, in half lengthwise with the right side of the fabric facing inwards and pin the sides like this. I sew one centimeter from here. I trim the corners and the sides and turn it the right way around. I push the corners gently. I place the chest pocket weld on top of the slanted side of the inner pocket bag like this. The nicks should match and the weld should be centered in between the basting threads. Then I pin the raw edges and sew close to the edge, but make sure to sew in between the basting threads. After that, I sew again but with a basting stitch length and 1 cm from the raw edges. Once that's done, I place the chest pocket weld and the inner pocket bag on the left front piece with the inner pocket bag basting matching the bottom basting on the front. The front of the weld should be facing the right side of the front and then I pin. I sew along the basted guideline that I made earlier. I take the outer pocket bag of the chest pocket and press 1 cm onto the wrong side to create a fold line. I place the outer pocket bag with the right side facing the front and with the basting matching the top basting on the front. I open back out and the raw edge should be on the raw edge of the inner bag. I pin it and sew right in the fold line between the basting threads. Here I measure 2 cm away from the basting threads. I cut through the front between the two rows of stitching, stopping where I'm marked with the pins and then I cut a V-shape into the corners, stopping at the basting stitch. After that, I flip the inner and outer pocket bag through the cut opening to the wrong side. I put the right side of the weld against the right side of the front. Here, I make sure that the pocket pieces are down and I pin the edges. 
Then I sew the ends of the weld on the right side of the front, one millimeter from the edge. As you can see here, I only pin the pocket layers and I sew the contours of the pocket pieces. I trace straight lines by connecting the corners of the pocket opening indicated by basting thread. You should end up with a 1.5 by 15 cm rectangle. Then I draw parallel lines 0.75 cm from the top and bottom and 1.5 cm in from the short sides of the rectangle. I use red colored thread to baste along these lines. Make sure to use a bright color so that the guidelines are visible from the front. I take the flap pieces and the flap lining pieces. I pin them right sides together like this. Then I sew around as shown here. Once that's done, I cut notches into the seam allowance around the curves. Then I turn them right side out and press them flat. Next, I take the weld, sew pieces 18, and I fold them lengthwise at the V-notches with the right side of the fabric facing outwards. I repeat the same process with the inner pocket bags, folding by the V-notches again. Here I will sew using a basting stitch length 0.75 cm in from the edge. After, I take the weld and place it on top of the flap like this by matching the notches. I pin and sew by using a basting stitch length. I place the weld's fold line on the marked line at the top of the rectangle and the edges of the pocket between the two vertical marked sides. I pin the weld and flap to the front with the basting threads matching. I sew along the basted guideline that I made earlier. Next, I take the outer pocket bag and place the right way down along the raw edges of the flap and weld. I pin and sew close to the previous stitch. This is how it looks like after the sewing. Now I take the inner pocket bag and place the fold line on the mark line at the bottom of the rectangle and the edges of the pocket between the two vertical marked sides. I pin it with the basting threads matching. Then I sew along the basted guideline that I made earlier. I cut like earlier through the front between the two rows of stitching and I stop 2 cm away from the basting thread so I can cut a V-shape at both ends. Then I fold the inner and outer pocket back through the cut opening to the wrong side. Here you have these triangles on both sides. I fold them on either side of the pocket opening to the wrong side. After I sew them by hand on the pocket bag. Once that's done, I pin around the pocket bags and sew. I 
I repeat the same process to make the second pocket on the right front. Now all the pockets are done, let's assemble the coat. I place one of the front pieces on top of the back piece, right sides together, pin the shoulders and repeat with the other front. Then I sew the shoulders. After, I press the seam allowance open. On the front lapel you have one notch. I line up one end of the under collar with that notch, right sides together. The first basting thread in the corner of the collar should be matching the first basting thread in the corner of the front. I will start sewing one centimeter from the edge of the collar that's why I start to pin one centimeter from the same edge. I sew this end of the collar up to the first basting threads. I leave the needle lowered in the fabric. I raise the presser foot and cut into the seam allowance until just before the needle. Then, I turn the piece and lower the presser foot back down. I continue sewing until the next basting thread and once again I leave the needle lowered in the fabric, I raise the presser foot and cut into the seam allowance. I turn the piece, lower the presser foot back down and continue sewing. I repeat the same steps to sew the other end of the collar in place and I make sure that the notches are matching. Now I cut notches out of the collar's seam allowance and I press the seams open. After that I pin the sides like this and sew. I pin the top and bottom sleeves right sides together as shown here and so. I repeat the process on the second top and bottom sleeves. Then I press all the seam allowances open. After, I press the seam allowance up to the V notches to create a crease. Now I will assemble the sleeves. I turn the coat inside out and the sleeves the right way around. I slide the sleeve inside like this. I make sure here that the notches are matching perfectly. The single notch on the lower sleeve should line up with the side seam. The single notch on the top sleeve line it up with the front and the double notches on the sleeve bottom with the back. I pin and distribute the excess fabric between the markings. Then I sew the sleeve cap to the armhole. I place the front facing on top of the front lining, right sides together and matching the notches together. Then I pin and sew. I fold the back lining in half, right sides together and cut a V notch to mark the middle. Here you have the notches matching. I place a pin to secure it and measure 3 cm down 
and place a pin to mark it. Starting at the notches, I saw a parallel line to the middle line approximately 3 cm long. I fold the pleat like this, pin to secure it and I sew the pleat close to the edge. After, I pin the bottom of the back facing to the top of the back lining with the notches matching perfectly. And I sew. I pin and sew the shoulder seams. Then I press the seams open on the shoulders and the sides. Here I will assemble the upper collar to the coat lining and I will follow the same process as earlier when I assemble the collar to the coat. After sewing, I cut the notches on the seam allowances. Once that's done, I pin the side seams and now I can sew. As always, I press the seams open. In this step, I will follow all the instructions that I did earlier with the main fabric sleeves to create the sleeve linings. In one of the sleeves, I will leave an opening approximately 6-8 cm so I can turn the coat back the right way around. Don't forget to press the seams open after sewing the sleeve linings. Here the coat lining is inside out and I turn the sleeve the right way around. I slide it like this inside and as earlier I pin the sleeve lining to the coat lining by matching the notches. Then I sew. I place both coat and lining pieces with the right sides facing together as shown here. First, I pin the collar pieces together, making sure that the seam allowances on the sides are down. Now I can sew both collars. Once that's done, I pin the lapel and the center front lines together and sew. I turn the coat inside out. I cut the corners and excess fabric, then I press the seams. millimeters from the edge, top stitch through all the layers of the front facing up to the hem. I turn the coat with the right side of the fabric facing inwards and sew the hems together. After that, I turn the coat inside out with the opening in the sleeve. I slide the sleeve lining into the main sleeve so that everything lines up nicely. Here we have the fold crease from the sleeve hem. I will line up the sleeve lining with the crease and fold the main sleeve. After, 
eye pin and so around. I align the raw edge of the main sleeve with the seam and fold. I pin and do an invisible stitch by hand. Then I close the sleeve opening by doing an invisible stitch by hand as well. Thank you for watching this hand to code tutorial. Leave a comment to let me know what you think and don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video to help support me. I'll see you next Monday with a new tutorial. Bye bye.